forward and you know, hearing from you. Great. Sure. All right. I think I think we can start uh, the day two uh, sessions. All right. Let's begin. Okay. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to day two of Drone Tech Expo, Saudi Arabia 2021. Uh, it takes immense pleasure uh, in welcoming all of uh, the speakers for the day. We do have four speakers for today. Uh, I should quickly name them as well shortly. Um, like, like the way uh, how uh, the first day went, uh, as I said, uh, as I already mentioned, it was very informative, you know, educating all of our attendees about the latest technologies uh, that don't, uh, don't have to offer for different industry segments. So it was very insightful one. And I'm very, very confident that even day two is gonna have uh, similar technology showcases uh, to, to educate people uh, about, about the drone technology and its solutions uh, to various industries, all right? Now, um, today, uh, the, the first session would be from our very own moderator of the event, who is Adrian Pina Cervantes. I, I did introduce Avian uh, yesterday, but I'm going to do it once again today for all of those who happened to miss yesterday's introduction. All right. uh, now, Adrian uh, was uh, our host for our previous uh, event as well that, that featured Spain uh, last month. All right, and uh, we are very, very happy to have him once again to to moderate our uh, you know the Don't Take Expo Saudi uh, as well. So. Uh, a quick introduction about Adrian. Now, Adrian uh, is the founder director of, uh, I'm sorry, give me one moment here. Yep. Right. Okay, so as I said, Adrian is, has an extensive background in avionics, all right? He's also the, uh, the, uh, uh, the founder director of, of, of a great company called Technovix in Mexico, where he uh, uh, experiences, he, he, he does uh, perform a lot of experimentations with, uh, with drones and how it can be utilized for you know, different segments. I'm sure Adrian would be the right person who can, who can you, know, uh, uh, you know, do a better introduction about what he actually does uh, and what are his passions in life and what his visions are, what his motive is, everything will be definitely shortly be explained by Adrian. Now, as I said, uh, he has an extensive background in avionics, RPAS drone operation, uh, UAV construction and RPAS photogrammetry. Now his experience in, uh, in, in drones uh, ranges from professional operation and legal framework assessment uh, he's an active member of uh, AUVSI uh, and the International Airship Association since 2005. He's also attended a lot of training programs and conferences in South Korea, Japan, Latin America, and Europe. He also has an extensive six years of services in military uh, background. His military career includes six years of uh, you know, aviation specialist in avionics and radio communications with the Mexican Naval Aviation Maintenance Center, right? And um, that, that's just a little about what Adrian is all capable of or what he's made of or what his experiences are. I would much uh, uh, wish Adrian himself to, you know, uh, to let us know more about what his, uh, what his background and what his uh, uh, future plans are all right Aiden, i'll let you uh, to take over the, the very first session of this day two of uh, don't take expo saudi and uh, yep the state is all yours please go ahead Aiden. thank you thank you so much Harun. i am very happy to be with you today and to enjoying i am enjoying too much to have this contact with a lot of friends who love deeply the, the drone industry as well, drone applications. Myself, I have uh, um, experiences, very good experiences now so far in Mexico, uh, deploying businesses with drones. Uh, I know everybody in, in, in drone industry is asking for new opportunities to deploy uh, more and more business uh, for customers, for clients. Uh, I'd like today to share with you what I am doing in Mexico, employing Ypsilon, 
this uh, great platform, this great product from SRM Consulting. Uh, I, beca I became a dealer for SRM Consulting since seven years ago. And uh, so far I have seen the, these uh, advances that SRM Consulting is offering to everybody asking for opportunities to deploy business in their respective areas. Latin America is a great market. Uh, uh, there are many countries in Latin, Latin America now employing drones, you know, uh, not only those uh, uh, with um, okay. consumer grade drones, but as well uh, specialized or customized drones. Uh, just like in my company, we build and we deploy our own drones with um, IoT applications for uh, uh, construction industry. And uh, mainly now we are on security as well, uh, civilian protection applications. But uh, there is a huge opportunity in drone inspection, in industrial inspection for drone businesses now. Uh, I'd like to share with you what we have done in Mexico so far with Ypsilon. Um, let me start by saying um, that uh, there are many, many options uh, in Ypsilon platform. We have Ypsilon Maps for uh, deploying your maps uh, and your data capture on um, Ypsilon. As well, you have the opportunity to deploy these Ypsilon maps in, uh, according to your data capture with video captured by your drone and uh, in an uh, geographic information platform deploy. Um, as well, now we have Ypsilon Aerial Solutions where you can customize your autopilot to fly uh, with uh, any um, mission profiles uh, in mind from you, but just preparing your pre-flight, your flight execution as well, your post uh, production for your drone. That's what we are doing. I'd like to share with you uh, first what we are doing with drones and um, uh, deploying uh, drones in the um, business for security. This is um, a special application uh, we have made for uh, uh, army in Mexico, uh, trying to protect natural resources, which are endangered right now. So sadly, we can say we are suffering from deforestation in Mexico. And uh, let me share with you my screen. Um, okay, can you see my screen now? Not yet. Wow. Yeah, I've been able to see it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Right. We have deployed um, a fixed wing uh, drone in a forest far away from uh, Mexico City where there are many uh, issues about deforestation. Local authorities uh, were asking for a fast uh, and easy to deploy solution. You can see in the, in the left side, the map uh, just you can use in, as in this case, Google Maps uh, or uh, Google Earth platform. And in the right side, you can find the video captured by the drone. As you can see now, our camera is uh, in this, uh, it's stabilizing because it's getting altitude uh, as the drone is, is reaching its maximum uh, altitude flight. Uh, you can see on the right, on the left side, that there is an indication uh, where you are now in geographic information uh, context. 
and in the uh, right uh, side you can see the video but as well you can see markers under video screen where you can uh, take some um, basic uh, annotations on video for instance here i have an annotation and i can go directly to the note that we have deployed so people uh, in remote areas can receive this information with a, a specific notes uh, as in this case we are talking about the bridge p11 uh, where we are just marking this this bridge uh, along the route uh, as 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 you are uh, going forward you can find the markers and these markers could have a specific uh, annotations in this uh, marker, we're talking about uh, water deposit. So it's uh, clear for people that you have an inventory here going through. And uh, let's go forward. Uh, you can go directly to the place where we have the trouble. Uh, you can see here, uh, we are flying over. You can uh, go forward or backward as you as you require okay so now you have uh, uh, these markers and you have the digital information uh, geographic information uh, deploying the, the the flight path of the drone your notes in each uh, side of the of the pad and so you can go directly to the notes you are generating in this case you can see the the area with the maximum deforestation here yes so you can write down any details about this and when you review you can go forward uh, my drone is flying uh, an altitude about 90 meters above ground level uh, so you you can have uh, very good details in the capture but now you, you have this opportunity to express more information more far away from only video. You can express any notes, any um, specific things you have uh, to show to your client, to your customers, asking for uh, security screening. Just in this case, we are conducting a, a persistent surveillance over these uh, remote areas where people could have a lot of time walking through and you can do it in a drone in just 10, 11 minutes, you can cover 9.5 kilometers on the road. And uh, this is very easy to deploy in a geomotion video. Uh, you can reach this demo. Uh, I will uh, share with you the link uh, by, by the chat and uh, you can uh, follow this, this uh, example. Uh, you can see it with the drone, we are finding the places where we have more deforestation uh, in critical uh, problems. If I follow this marker, then I have uh, the specific information. Uh, we are finding uh, specific problems here, so we, write down that on your motion video and we can share later this information with uh, uh, the client. So our customers love this application and we are conducting many other screening and uh, uh, land surveying uh, for security. This is security mainly, but you can also uh, include uh, Ypsilon maps with the links that you want to uh, you want to uh, include in your report, maybe you have a photogrammetric uh, uh, capture in this place, and so you can link this place through the web uh, links that you have prepared or the servers where these maps are loaded. So when you finish your flights, you can see uh, here we have a, a different speeds um, uh, so very slow you can very go fast and so you can uh, house your video and as well 
this geographic information is very helpful for anybody trying to express any um, ideas or any things you require to express, to, okay? So now we have uh, now these, these uh, contacts in the screen. Um, I hope you can find good uh, options with uh, this application, Geomotion video. Remember this, please. So I will pause the video and I know, let me share with you another business case we have with, uh, with Ypsilon. Now we are with getting Ypsilon maps as well, your motion video, but you have here a uh, data capture by drone and uh, by people on ground. And uh, we have here uh, layers showing um, specific areas in a city, uh, Mexico City, where we have a data capture. And uh, if I change the layer and I deploy the luminaries public lightning, you can see now uh, the, the public lightning on the streets and you will find uh, that you have uh, the, the, the position for these luminaries here. And uh, then if, if you go forward this uh, information, you can deploy information in a very easy way. Uh, but for example, I go to this uh, public lamp and I can uh, find the, 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 the data corresponding to this public lamp. And uh, what you're doing with, uh, on, on ground is taking the pictures you require for this uh, public uh, lightning and including in the inventory. As well, you have the layers showing um, uh, different maps. You can have uh, 2D maps as well, 3D deployment uh, maps wh where you can deploy your uh, photogrammetric uh, works on these specific places. So if you choose any public uh, lightning, you can find uh, characteristics about this light, uh, public uh, lightning. Uh, and then you can take any, any data. Uh, well, when you have 3000 public lighting uh, inventory, well, you have a lot of data to show because you have uh, the kind the type of the technology employed with the public lighting, you have the position, you have many other characteristics that you have to express. These kind of inventories in Mexico are uh, uh, necessary for a power utility company to charge uh, their clients. Uh, and you can have as well uh, the, the, the watts employed, gigawatts in this case, by this uh, municipality. So year by year, af year after year, the, the power utility company showed go forward in this uh, uh, capture. And then they require from us to deploy this inventory, not only for municipality, but as well for power utility company, as well for any other uh, people engaged with these kind of activities, okay? Now, uh, I have uh, uh, now this um, brochure that I like to share with you about this application. This is called Inspector. Inspector, uh, Ypsilon Inspector is uh, uh, in, 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 in the kind of, or type of products from SRM Consulting, trying to get inventory data to the cloud, to servers and put in all this information, not only um, uh, data capture, uh, but geographic information systems, maps as well, statistics that you have captured and you have organized in a very easy to use manner. So you can use this data, not only to deploy the position, the, the type or characteristics of each one of the public li uh, lighting 
uh, repository you have on the city, but as well just to, to generate any statistics you require for your clients, for your customer. So you can find this information very, very easily on ASRM Consulting website. And uh, why does these uh, kind of companies, do these kind of companies require this information? Well, there are many, many um, uh, circumstances around to capture uh, geographic uh, or georeferencing uh, inventory in, in not only power utility companies, but as well water, um, uh, pro, uh, water deployment for cities, as well urban information in any kind. So you can find many good applications as we are doing here in Mexico to provide uh, by Ypsilum uh, inspector, this kind of solutions, okay? So uh, now you have this uh, uh, information on the website as well. You can ask for us if you have any question about uh, these kind of uh, products from ASRM Consulting. Uh, let me share again the screen and show you where you have this information in ASRM. Uh, you can find it, of, of course, by maps.geomotionvideo.com and you can ask for a demo as well. You can sign in to create your own um, exercises by now. But of course you have uh, now uh, this, um, this brochure online and you can go on uh, directly to, uh, the, for example, if you need, or if you require access to this kind of, of examples for uh, electing public inventory, please send us uh, an email to info at SRM Consulting and we will provide you with any uh, support to help you find uh, the, the adequate um, solutions. For instance, you can have deployed not only light uh, uh, street inventory, you can have stop lights, but as I was talking to you, you are uh, uh, capturing images about of the land. You can see here uh, the information, you can see the photography, the date it was captured, the ID, as well, many other circumstances that you could uh, ask for. And not only uh, public luminaries uh, we have uh, in, in this inventory, as well as stop lights, as well, uh, uh, a specific uh, uh, electric uh, uh, Hydrogen the, uh, uh, screens. Uh, where you are uh, in need in the municipality to control the power consumption. So thank you so much. Uh, please, if you write down srmconsulting.s, you can find many, many other solutions for you. You can find it uh, in many sectors. You can find... Uh, the three main uh, frames of the Ypsilon platform, Ypsilon, OrtoSky as well. With Ypsilon, you can go to Ypsilon Core, where you have the, an, an entire business uh, organization, drone uh, business organization for you. Ypsilon Maps, it's a powerful tool uh, for you to deploy geographic information systems and drone capture, as well Geomotion Video where you can uh, create these kind of products that I was showing uh, some minutes ago. And of course, of course, Ypsilum Aerial Solutions. Ypsilum Aerial Solution is a very, very nice application, but it is really powerful for you to, to get your drone into a new concept uh, where you can capture and process on the cloud these capture to create maps, to create um, many other uh, information uh, capture sharing. Uh, you have flybread maps. It's very, very interesting that you can find 
these uh, applications not only for drone, but if you have to capture large areas, too many hectares of, of, of terrain, you can employ an onboard camera for manned uh, aircrafts. So please visit uh, <coughs> SRN Consulting and uh, you will find many solutions. Thank you so much for listening uh, this presentation. And uh, I am ready for uh, uh, for your questions, if you have anyone. Yes, and, Adrian, uh, I do have. have. <laughs> yes, of Adrian. Of course, I should yes. uh, See, I do have a few doubts. Like, uh, since you showed the Ypsilon inspector where it can capture automatically the power line poles or the street light inventory or the high tension towers all we need to do is just fly the drone capture the image it gives you uh, and uh, we take it into ypsilon uh, inspector and then we can make the ai do the entire uh, capture of uh, the tower line that is x y and what about the z is it going to give you give us the information about the z too of course uh, Ashwin, you have to take many procedures here to, okay. to get the data. First, you have to walk on ground, uh, taking and capturing with, with camera, with GPS, you're, you're referencing this information. And then you upload by the app you have developed by SRM Consulting. Uh, you, you upload this information to the server. Then, this information is receiving just like for computing, you know, it's very small data, amount data, but it's reaching the server. Now, you have ground capture and you cannot do it from the drone because it is very, very specialized uh, capture. What you have the moderators about the information of the lighting uh, street lamp, and uh, you have the model, you have uh, the technology which uh, employs this kind of lamp. It's a LED lamp, it's a metallic or gas lamp. Uh, there are many kinds. So the operator is taking these 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 characteristics through the app developed and, or, uh, and, and provided by SRM Consulting. And this data goes directly to the server. But when you have larger areas where you have not only to express that you have a model, a kind of lamp, but you have to express the, the, the right of way for the lamp deployment, where you have to express the characteristics of the terrain around the lamps, where you have to express uh, if you have uh, any um, other conditions that you cannot see on ground, only from the drone, then you have to prepare a second layer. This layer is provided by Ypsilon maps, where you can deploy this data. And uh, I didn't have the enough time, but we have a deployment where we captured not only by ground and then on the drone, and you uh, generate the 3D modeling of this terrain. Yes, just you can uh, uh, analyze the uh, the the um, the tall uh, the, the altitude for each uh, lamp uh, pole as well. If you have trees, if you have people uh, in, uh, invading uh, people. Uh, just getting much more area coverage than they require uh, and, and putting on risk the lamp operation. As well in Mexico, we have a trouble now with earthquakes. We have a lot of problems here with terrain modification along the time. So when you have this first mo 3D modeling and then you receive, uh, unfortunately, uh, an earthquake uh, and the terrain is changing their characteristics, then you can uh, have the pre-earthquake um, uh, uh, event and then the post-earthquake uh, event. So you can have this comparison, not only with the lamps characteristics,
but as well to rate <clears throat> model characteristics. So can you imagine you don't only can handle data for lamps, but as well geographic information systems around the lamps, along corridors where you have to express the, uh, uh, for, for example, in the next year, we have the requirement to calculate the luminary power and how many square meters is in effective uh, uh, this uh, lamp providing light. So in this uh, case, where, where you are saving money, uh, deploying the luminaries maintenance, you can uh, know if you have enough area lightning or you don't have. Our Mexican Air Authority right now is very obsessive protecting urban areas from drone flights. But now there is no other way to do it so fast, so quickly, and with a lot of accuracy <clears throat> if you don't do it with drone or deployment. You cannot do it by ground. You have to employ drones. Mexican Air Authority is an understanding these uh, necessities from municipalities, and they are asking us to deploy the safety and uh, risk management for deploying drones over people and over property. Uh, I, I think there, these tools, Ypsilon, Ypsilon Maps, Geomotion Video, can provide necessary uh, confidence to air authority and they have reviewed the, the information and they think they have enough information to provide the clearance for drone flights. So yeah. it's, it's a very useful tool. I understand. Tool. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Adrian. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Um, is there another, another question? I'm reviewing the chat. Well, did yes, have I, have any... a, I have a question. Oh, go on, go on. Yeah, this is Thank Umar Said. This is Umar Said from Pakistan. Some people are using satellite technology for geographically mapping. And we are we are recommending people to use drones. So how can we satisfy people by our technology? Have you any uh, have you any authentic clue about it? Well, you know, I think the 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 worst scenario now for people deploying drones is uh, normativity. It's about legal framework of operation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but technology is very, uh, you know, there are many wide applications along uh, cameras yes. on board of drones, but I think you can express to people that it's not only about capturing a geographic information system. It's about organizing all these kind of, of data into these kind of platforms that can provide power to people to, to make choices, to make any arrangements to save money. So in my case, municipalities as well in your country uh, have to conduct maintenance every day, every month, every year. So you have actionable data with a uh, very uh, fresh, a real time. very new captures. Yes, a real time, uh, real like time. a weekly mm -hmm. monitoring or a monthly monitoring will make sense than a satellite sure. imagery any day. And uh, with the platform of GeoMotion and GeoMaps, you can just have the data updated in a weekly manner or a monthly manner, depending upon the client's requirement. So in that way, yeah. the municipality can be in a better beneficial way because you're just getting a weekly data updated on any project or anything which is happening around, not like unlike the satellite imagery. So yeah, that's the Please, thing. yes, I'd like to invite you to ask for a demo. Please feel free to yeah. write uh, an email and uh, get access to this uh, information so you can compare what could work for your country and for your clients and for your people. That's, yes. that's the reason of this expo, to share with you this information. If it could be useful for your uh, projects, please feel free to ask for a demo, okay? Thank you, Omer. Well, 
Uh, I appreciate too much if, if you have any questions on, on chat. Uh, I'm asking Arun. Yes. Uh, ah, okay, it, it, he has uh, uh, already uh, on the chat, uh, he has write uh, the, the, the email for you to reach Asarabin Consulting and asking for them, okay? Yeah. Thank you so much for, for listening to my uh, speech about Ypsilon platforms. Now, uh, we have our next uh, speaker, uh, Ashwin. Uh, can, we, can you tell us uh, something about our next speaker? Yeah, that's me. I'm going to speak next on SRM Solutions, uh, Ortho <laughs> Drone and Ortho Sky. I was I was talking about that. Yes. You you know yourself very well, so you can talk yeah. about you very well. <laughs> no, no. Please allow me to introduce Ashwin to you to yeah. everybody. It's a great professional on uh, geographic information systems. He is an owner uh, of a uh, bird map uh, bird view mapping. Yeah, bird view. mapping and. Uh, I, I, Every time he is uh, um, sharing information with us, I am really amazed about the advances he is taking in India with this beautiful and uh, great uh, product from Asaran Consulting. Go on, Ashwin. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Adrian, for introducing me and hi to the entire audience. Uh, today I'll be uh, showcasing Ortho Drone and Ortho Sky. Uh, which are one of the main uh, useful solutions in the UAV industry. So uh, the main reason today we are out here is to share some knowledge about, uh, you know, the market, what is happening. And uh, uh, I hope every can, everyone can see my screen. I'll start off with my presentation. Yeah. Yes, we can see it. Yes. Very well. Yeah. So... Uh, OrthoSky has launched the new version, Ortho Drone 3.0 and OrthoSky 3.0, the new, the latest version. Uh, and uh, I'll be showing how the UAV processing can be done, unlike the other softwares like Pix4D or AGI software in the market, and how you can utilize even the stereo mapping in the similar software that is OrthoSky itself. You need not go for a third-party software for creating layers or doing a CAD drawing. So it's one software where uh, we can use it for 2D digitization. We can also use it for flying the drone. We can also use it for processing the data and as well as use it for stereo mapping, which is one of the main capabilities and one of the main essential for uh, carrying out a cartographic mapping or a city town developing uh, smart city development uh, projects. So, uh, the product is being developed by SRM and uh, the product manager is Lewis. Uh, he had shown yesterday the few capabilities of uh, GeoMotion and Ypsilon maps uh, yesterday. And uh, today I'll be showing uh, how Ortho Drone works. A little introduction about my company. Uh, we, BirdView Mapping, are one of the UAV uh, mapping companies in India who've been carrying out a lot of. Uh, surveys using drone and DGPS and using OrthoSky platform for rest of the process that is the processing and as well as mapping for uh, clients. So a little introduction, we started off in 2005 and uh, 2013 we got it registered and so far things are going good and I am very happy today where we are standing in the drone sector. A uh, few solutions what we offer, we offer stereo mapping, uh, photogrammetry, we also offer uh, LiDAR projects. We do airborne LiDAR and as well as, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, terrestrial LiDAR as well. And we also do a lot of UAV projects. As uh, UAV is one of the ma main uh, solution today in the market, be it, let it be in the mapping sector, survey sector, or any surveillance, security, everything is required. UAV is one of the main game changer today in the market. And yesterday we had even Will showing how indoor warehouse can be, you know, drones can be used and how beneficial drones can be. So I think each and every sector can use drones for a better, you know, uh, development in each sector, even the agricultural, say, we showed in the last Spain event. So 
uh, I will be showing how OrthoSky works. Uh, see, as I said, it's one solution where you can use LiDAR, even aerial photogrammetry, that is aircraft captured images, aerial triangulation can be done and UAV processing also can be done in OrthoSky software. And uh, we have four, five modules for OrthoSky. One is OrthoFlight, OrthoLittle, and uh, OrthoLittle is basically for the 2D and uh, drafting tool and ortho drone that's my topic today and even the point cloud data where lidar can be implemented lidar plays a very major role so in the last event uh, we had the australian client showing how point cloud data can be used beneficially in ortho sky software and how the spin tool works how the classification can be done and how quick the ground can be generated the ground can be classified the vegetation can be classified and as well as the building and then finally we can create a 3d a model for the entire site. So these are one of the main uh, reasons we use OrthoSky and it is very powerful tool. Like you can use it for all the sectors of the GIS industry. I'll be showing how it works basically today. So there are three processes. That is initial data. Then you have uh, one, two, three. I'll show you how it works. Once you open the OrthoSky drone software, you land up creating a new project. The minute you create a new project, uh, the first main thing you should know is how you can get the camera information and uh, as well as which projection has been, the drone has been shot. Unlike the other softwares, we have a special tool itself in SRM where you just click on the tool and you can see in my screen, the once you select the photo on your right hand side, it shows the altitude, what height the drone was flying. It will show you the projection system where exactly the drone was shot and as well as the image size uh, for the calibration purpose. So once we have this information, we are going to export it to a camera information, setting up the projection, and we can then introduce this camera file into our projection system as, you, as I can show you in my screen. So the minute you add camera file, the next step, what you are supposed to be doing is creating a new project and yeah. And you have to first step is to change the projection system of the project. It will be in default uh, WGS 84. If you know your specific zone, you can straight away go say change projection. And it's a very simple step. There's a camera information to be added. The minute you click on the camera information here, you have already here the stool says which all projection is available in the EPSG. So you select that projection system, say OK. The minute you say OK, it says you to load in the EXE file. That is the camera information. This is the next step. You can add the camera file information, which, which has got not only the camera information, EXE file, which has got X, Y, Z of the images which has been captured. So you can see it on your right hand side, the omega, phi, kappa, and uh, as well as the rest of the values, x, y, z, and omega, phi, kappa. They, they are the six columns. So right now, AT is not being done. Aerial triangulation is not being done. So we are going to show you how aerial triangulation is going to be done. Now we are going to add the images. It is showing exactly the x, y, z, omega, phi, kappa. The initial orientation has to be carried out. The minute you say OK, it says uh, default set projection and, and create an elevation generate. The minute you say you can see on your right hand side, you can, you know, the, uh, it generates the, the uh, stereo pairs for you to create. And then you can see it down. It has also got the image calibration details. This is how you set up a project. You can introduce once the aerial triangulation is being carried out in ortho drone. You can introduce straight away in a photogrammetry software in the same software, which is ortho sky. The minute you introduce, you can see the stereo pairs created in it. You can see the left image and the right image. That's image one and image two. Now you can see the stereo pair in the between. So what we can do is you have a list of layers on your right hand side. You can also create layer list and also start doing a feature extraction in a studio. Here you can enter the serial key and then you go on to, you know, start doing feature extraction. 
you can see the list of layers on your right hand side like you want road you can write uh, create a layer road you can also create a layer for uh, building tops you can also create vegetations you can also create a dtm dtm is one of the main uh, one of the key factors which lets you to create a contour map so the stereo capability in the same software is one of the main reasons uh, we recommend ortho sky unlike where you stop in pix4d generating the ortho photo and uh, creating the dsm and uh, you do not go to the next level for this you need a photogrammetry workstation and a stereo specs and then a stereo mouse for you to do the feature extraction so i'll be showing you uh, how this basically works you can see the stereo image you can start capturing the edge of the building and then you can capture the entire building the way you want and uh, unlike the other mouses in the other photogrammetry software like we use tilt mouse for 3d capture the mouse itself is close to near about in indian uh, near about uh, 1000 usds but this mouse is uh, very easily available on amazon and it's called a 3d annexure mouse which ortho sky supports this lets you to even use it for the lidar technology as well since it's got a spin window and it's got the z axis wheel in it so this makes a very easy available mouse and cost effective also to use into our solution i am just showing you a rough uh, imagery how we can do a building top to be captured and then again we can also capture the individual you can see the vertical height which can be measured the top of the building and the bottom of the building for us to create a 3d model so uh, a vertical 2d snap can be done to the product and to from the rooftop to the bottom and you can again you know snap to the exact columns where you have drawn and then take it into your 3d model probably in autocad or any other software to create a 3d model but again we can again create it in srm software itself using the dsm so you can create 3d model here itself you not depend on the third party software so and uh, you can see even each and every inventory that is even the painted line manhole these features which play a very vital role in a smart city which cannot be just captured you know using the 2d uh, ortho image uh, it requires z plays the major role so you know exactly which way the water flow is and how uh, the water treatment plants can be set around the manholes the sanitaries the you know all the ditches can be planned accordingly and again uh, digitizing the roads gives you the better elevation of the place and a complete picture of for the smart city and again you can also we are showing the minute change that is even the curb stones the curb stones along with the road also can be captured in the millimeter accuracy so we can i sure we can deliver near about 5 cm accuracy or even lesser depending on the ground control point what we have provided and the aerial triangulation which we carry out which plays a very essential role so we are just again showing how to capture the vegetation top and uh, how we can again create uh, it into the list of layers and uh, here we can show type 1 type 2 that is the top and the bottom and then you can create it into a shape file take it unlike you need to again go to a third party software to a cad software autocad you can do it in the same software you can use the tools to create shape files and also superimpose on the same ortho imagery you can shuffle the stereo image and as well as the cad drawing so it makes it very comfortable for the user friendly handling you know on to one screen itself unlike you know you're shuffling into different softwares to you know show your clients so these are some of the list of uh, you know snapping tools what i was just showing how to you know do a 2d capture and a 3d capture we have lot of snap tools you have uh, mid nearest just like other softwares so all these tools are available in this itself so you need not depend on a third party software for any reason at all so uh, we are just showing how the 2d snap and the 3d snap also works you have on the screen so this is uh, one of the lidar point cloud data uh, how the building is being classified and how the brown color points are being classified into the ground and the vegetation is being classified into the green so the raw data what we generate from pix4d or agi soft also can be taken into the uh, srm software and also the point cloud data can be 
classified and model can be generated in our software and again do the rectification also so this is one of the site what srm had carried out for one of their projects and it shows very clearly how the minerals and how the dsm is being generated and it very clearly shows the vegetation and all the other features exactly how it works this is again uh, a quick uh, cartography how uh, as i said how we superimpose if you want you can remove the image also and see your cat drawing or superimpose the cat drawing onto your uh, ortho image or your stereo images and you can also show it to your clients and that makes the beneficial again this shows how the building rooftop this is one of the 3d city projects what we have done we have captured all the rooftops and it is showing all the elevations uh, this is again it is a very neat contour generation where even 0.1 meter contour can be generated using srm software using the grid points which is being generated the dsm being generated and the final product the contour can be generated as smooth as possible and uh, it can has contour plays a very vital role in the survey industry we can even provide 0.1 meter even though the files are very he heavy and it, it is generally not generated by others but our software enables us to do that from 0.1 to any 1 meter contour also it depends upon the grid what you want to generate this is again water classification like the hydro features all the lakes can be captured and showed in the you know only the lakes can be also showed in the studio and these are the other verticals where all we can uh, use uh, ortho sky in uh, highway metro projects bridges highway and also smart city development and as well as mobile mapping also can be carried out uh, and again this this is basically how ai works and how uh, the cloud data works you need not even do the digitization work it can be uh, the minute you fly the data it can be uploaded to uh ipsilum core today and all the list of layers what you are looking out for you can be specific and uh, the ai can be generated it's a paid version so you can easily get all the features instead of having manpower getting your job done has all the adrian showed how the tower power line or the light poles all these features can be captured uh, you know automatically you know uh, uh say a 20 km stretch or a 50 km stretch that saves a lot of time and hours of uh, you know the production so this can be very very beneficial and uh, we also provide online uh, uav certified course from msrm uh, and uh, we have done this in the past for uh, some clients from uh, the middle east region and it is a 5 days course which can be conducted online how exactly i showed how ortho sky works we can show you the entire process how ortho sky processing to ortho image processing it to lidar and as well as taking into a stereo and showing how the mapping can be done but you need uh, uh, we can also arrange this as an online course with the support of srm and as well as uh, we can also conduct this training in spain itself or if we have a batch of uh, people from your organization itself like a batch of 10 people so definitely we can have one of our srm trainers uh, you know come down to the middle east saudi region and uh, showcase our product and also our solutions to you uh, on a physical oh, event as well yeah yeah. yeah thank you so much yeah yeah uh, uh, now i thank you so much i hope uh, if anyone has got any questions can ask me i will be happy enough to answer you uh, hi ashwin yes uh, this is rao adil yeah, oh, yeah, can you hear me yeah yeah please go ahead okay well first of all that was a nice presentation no i have a couple of questions so yeah. should i ask one by one or all of them yeah yeah please go ahead please go ahead okay. you can shoot it up no like uh, you told me like uh, this your uh, software Yes. Uh, your company software is it uh, is supported both lidar and yes. the optical the photogrammetry data. Yes. Is it for all the drones in the market or for some specific ones? No, it is for any UAV images being captured by any drone which has got GPS in it. And where once we have this information, we can use our software. You can use it for processing, and that's what I said. You not depend on till date in the market. We have each solution 
a different company. Like earlier, we had photogrammetry. It was a different software. Then we had CAD drawing. We merged it with the stereo. And then it is a different company. Then we had Bentley MicroStation, which was introduced again for the CAD drawing purpose. And then we have some few other softwares for uh, LiDAR processing. And again, today in market, people are very aware of Pix4D. It is again, it, uh, it is only for the 2D purpose. You can only generate ortho mosaic and the uh, rest of the data or AGI soft. But SRM is the only solution right now in the market where you have all the GIS industry product in looped in one. So you can do the first uh, capture the image in any of the drone, what you have. You can take the images, process the image in ortho sky, ortho drone module. And the minute you finish producing the ortho drone module, you have ortho mosaic and point cloud data generated. And then finally, you can also generate stereo pairs, which can be used for photogrammetry purpose. And then once you generate this photogrammetry, you have the data, you can again generate the true ortho as well. Yes. Okay, I got it. But my question is that because there are different types of sensors for LIDAR, I'm specifically yes. talking about Yes. LIDAR. So you LIDAR, can... There is, uh, DJI just launched their one. Uh, yes. I think, yes. One, and there is MS3 from Russia and Regal Australia. Yes. Yes. We can yeah. also use any point cloud data being uh, generated from any of the sensors. We had showcased this product, uh, how LIDAR system works, uh, the software works last time in the Spain event. We can probably share you the link. And uh, the last session, what we showed was, it was a laser scanner fixed on a car uh, and it was driven around for mobile uh, LiDAR sensor. And that point cloud data was taken into OrthoSky software where we, where we can, you know, OrthoSky software had even the geo motion. So even the geo motion video shows exactly where the point cloud data has been shot and as well as the LiDAR data can be classified, any LiDAR mm -hmm. data from any mm -hmm. sensor. Okay, another like in this feature extraction. Yes. Is it done automatically or like do I have to give some uh, some? Yes. See now, uh, as you know, photogrammetry. Uh, photogrammetry is always stereo. You wear a three D specs. You need a three D mouse, and the entire setup has to be into stereo for you to do a mapping. But what SRM is right now developed the AI software, which can generate roads automatically, which was shown yesterday in the presentation where the roads can be captured, the power poles can be captured automatically, uh, the AI reads it automatically, you know, and then we can, you know, the system makes it to you produce the list of layers according to the AI, according to the client requirement. So SRM is in a process where they are developing uh, much more AI features probably in the coming future, like, you know, where you can automatically capture the building tops, probably you can also capture the, uh, the tree tops. So these are some of the features which which uh, SRM is developing. But, like, but, uh, yes. uh, sorry to interrupt. Like yeah. for the feature extraction, like it will extract only the only major features or up to the very minor details. See, that is what AI using the AI. These are the main features what you can capture. But using the photogrammetry studio pair, we can even create pick up even the minute details which is there on the ground. So as I just explained in my session. Yeah. So if uh, so, if there is a curb stone beside the road, it can generate a separate layer for that. Yes. Yes. In a, uh, using the photogrammetry, yes, we can draw a top line on the top of the curb, and also we can draw a bottom brake line where the contour will be exactly generated between the curb stone and the road. So it is that, as I said, even we can get uh, generated a contour of near about. 0.1 meter. It depends upon what the client wants. No, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm not yes. talking about the control line. Yes. I'm talking about like the features. Okay. Yes, yes. Of course, we can data. capture the features. Yes, so we can capture drawing, the features. Without drawing the lines, can we extract it out? Can the software extract automatically or do I have to do some manual work as well? See, that is what. Now, uh, oh, SRM is on the AI developing process where we have just started capturing the roads and the tower lines. These are the features right now we have. In case, if the client is in specific, the client is buying a product and they are looking for list of features, what in particularly they want, like as you want the curb stone to be captured. So the, 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 the SRM has got the team where they can develop, you know, the AI to be reading manually, automatically the curb stone as well in the upcoming future. It depends upon the client's requirement. So like there will be development uh, on the way. Yes, what definitely. What depend on the requirement. Yes. Yeah. Yes, only for for yes. for, for talk a little bit uh, more about that as we yes. we, we just today we saw something about our 
intelligent artificial module that right now can capture um, general uh, roles uh, and another internet feature, but we can train for capture every everything. And in the near future, let's say two, three months from now, we, 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 we have a new release that uh, will be able to, you to choose some elements in your image and they identify similar elements on the, on the, just in the, in, the, in the area that you are um, trying to capture. That means much more flexibility for the small areas. In general, right now we have trained the, the system for be used uh, all everywhere uh, using uh, normally um, data from, from the cloud. That means and WMS uh, system or a, a raster system that can be um, generated or, or, or over the world. But we are focusing on a new step and also we, we can train specifically for, for capture uh, some feature, but after the train is done, you can use as, as simple as, as you saw, as, as we saw yesterday that just to choose which, what element you, you want to, to find out and, and just to send and after the, fin and the system finish, they send you one email with the link with the data captured. Thank you so much, Jos. Uh, I think we are running out of time. Probably we can pass on to the next speaker. And if you have any doubts, you can always reach us out. You can email us out. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. Yes. Adrian, you have not the yes. microphone. Yes. Ashwin, thank you yes. so much for this. Yes. Uh, this good presentation you have yeah, for thank you so much or to yeah. sky yeah. uh if anybody has any other question please let us know by the chat and yeah. uh if, if uh you you go forward with the demos or something else you have the email from asrm consulting dot es so now uh we welcome to our next speaker mr arthur b brutinau Welcome, uh, Arthur. Uh, we are very glad to have you here today in the second day of Drone Tech, uh, Drone Tech Expo. So uh, Arthur is talking about a, a new uh, business model for drone operations. The Heli, um, Heli products, the, they, have, uh, they have developed a very, very singular and very effective drone platform. So welcome, Arthur. Thanks to, for being here. Yes, today. thank you, thank you, Adrian, and uh, I'm glad to meet all you gentlemen, and I believe some ladies are there. So uh, I'm very happy to be with you at this uh, drone expo. It's a really fun event, and uh, I had the feedback from my colleagues um, and friends uh, participating yesterday. Uh, it's a really great event, and we are happy to be able to listen to other people's wonderful ideas and developments and see where the uh, drone market is developing and growing, and also happy to share our own achievements and developments about the unmanned helicopter, uh, heli, uh, because it's a helicopter and it's electric, that's why uh, we want to introduce this as a new tool for businesses and uh, for many other applications outside of the business. So uh, we, we are a company established now in Poland and we uh, develop the products uh, across many countries and we have people from uh, different uh, uh, regions uh, joining the team as uh, we, we are expanding our operations. And uh, uh, now uh, what we found, there is a problem with drones. Uh, and uh, when we started our project, we, th we thought, what if the drone could be powerful and reliable and accessible all three at the same time? because we've seen the developments in the marketplace which were available were having either a limited amount of power 
or the reliability was not very much ensured, or it needed to take a lot of time for being on ground and not being capable to stay in the air for longer time. And this means it has a lot of flights back and forth, time to recharge, time to change that and what. So we, we found out that we, we need, first of all, to eliminate the uh, possibility for people to be involved in risky operations. So that's why we wanted to develop the unmanned systems. Uh, second, when we knew that the person will be not on board of the aircraft, we wanted that even piloting the aircraft is not limited to the human limitations. So we remove the risk of human error on the uh, piloting of the aircraft. Then we wanted to find the appropriate solution when the capacity of other drones were not high enough. So most of the uh, drone aircraft, which are there available and are available on the marketplace, are very limited in means of atmospheric conditions, like wind, temperature, precipitations, humidity, uh, visibility because of fog or dust or smog or other um, climate uh, conditions which just make these drones not operatable in most of the parts of the world most of the time of the year. So we wanted to increase the range of operations time. And then we also thought that cost is a very important drive for business. So we wanted to optimize the cost for inspections and operations carried out by manned helicopters. So very often what we found out from the operators of traditional helicopters is that they have to raise a huge machine with a immense operations cost to do a very, very basic and simple job. So they will take a, a huge truck to do a job which you basically can do with a bicycle. And this means that most of these jobs would never be done because they were not feasible, feasible economically. And on the other hand, sometimes the cost of the work, which is really important, like involving uh, the cost of human lives or other important things, were carried off cosmic costs which were hardly covered by the stakeholders. And also we wanted to make sure that drone operations are easy, so they become possible and become a routine, become a daily thing. So uh, this brings us to the features uh, of the Heli -E drone. So we thought about the problems and th this is what the uh, outcome is of what we have designed and manufactured and we continue to, uh, to fly and deliver to our clients. So, first of all, we made the helicopter drone to fly more than 120 minutes. So, 120 minutes is with the payload of about one kilogram, and that's a proven time flight. And with the same payload, uh, it can hover for 84 minutes because in some operations, uh, the flight doesn't have to be a linear flight. It has to hover like up and down or fly to a certain location and stay in the air to capture the data or do the delivery or do other jobs. <laughs> Many different things we have tested from. So that is very helpful. Yeah. Uh, we will have a section for question and answers. So if your mic is not necessary now, I think it's better to switch it off. Thank you. So 120 minutes uh, or about two hours in, in, in most of common conditions will make a very uh, efficient way to do linear, linear long range inspections like power lines or pipelines or uh, road infrastructure, uh, 
construction sites uh, in the remote areas or uh, industry remote areas like rigs or stations for surveying and other things. And also uh, in mapping jobs and surveying jobs, a long time of flight means that less time is spent on landings, less time is spent on reaching the location to do the mapping, and uh, even less time to reach the location to deploy the drone because using uh, multi-rotor drones for mapping and surveying means that the ground station has to move many, many times from one place to another because the time flight is very short. So we sorted out that operational problem uh, because all these relocations means moving people and vehicles, and this is a increased cost. The, uh, the other feature is about safety because safety is one high priority we put uh, in the development at all stages. And we think about um, safety uh, in operation as well as a, a top priority. Uh, first thing, we, we move the development towards the uh, fully autonomous beyond visual line of sight operations, which in most of the countries globally are not yet uh, under regula regulatory uh, openness. So countries are working towards that and we make our system being ready and we uh, follow through all these regulations which are published uh, in, in the open space to, to be compliant to all of this. And in our design feature, we, we do duplicate and triplicate and we, we make the system so it's redundant and it doesn't have uh, critical failures. So even if the data link is lost or the GPS signal is lost or is canceled or is banned, uh, uh, even if some of the systems are not working and we, we have in place other systems to take care of a flight control to make sure that even if uh, the main uh, motor is for some reason out of uh, operations, because it's a helicopter model of flight, it can land with uh, on auto rotation principle and we train our uh, helicopter to, to be able to perform these difficult piloting missions without the uh, operator on the ground to have to do the remote control uh, piloting. So all of this brings us that the safety is increased with no in-air incidents and accidents and uh, without any uncontrolled uh, ground accidents so we, we make sure that the helicopter in, in any stage without even with a major brokenness can make it safely to the ground without any harm to people or property. So uh, I missed the point that the maximum payload is uh, uh, seven kilograms. So everything up to seven kilograms and with the seven kilograms in hovering mode, uh, the time in air is 49 minutes, uh, the flight is 72 minutes, and uh, that is really impressive. If you know the professional drone uh, market, uh, the, these figures are really uh, um, record-breaking. So uh, we are very proud of these achievements. And uh, this is on the models we already released to the market, and we are working to, to, to increase these numbers furthermore. In some areas, we, we, are, we are aiming to double them. The cost for operations is a major uh, question which uh, uh, concerns many of our clients, and this is um, solved with using the electric uh, powertrain. So it's a fully electric um, a drone. And this means that cost of electricity in most of the area is much less than the cost for all sorts of uh, uh, petrol uh, products. And um, as well, this brings the safety because the drone is operating next to people when it 
uh, uh, start from the ground takes off and on the landings. And we, we want to keep this planet as clean as it could be. So uh, this was the option to go for fully electric uh, flights. And uh, here we, we, we come to a comparison table. We took as a, as a uh, benchmark one of the most popular uh, professional drones, the DJI Matrix 600 Pro. Uh, it's a uh, widespread uh, in operations for professional use. And uh, it is as well, uh, it's, it's electric, but most of the professional helicopters and larger uh, uh, multi-rotor drones are run on internal combustion engines. This way, uh, the manufacturer tries to bring the operation times to a higher value. And we can compare our fully electric helicopter operation times to most of the on the market products with uh, internal combustion engine. So we have 120 minutes plus of flight time and with our improving algorithms for flights, uh, this figure can be sometimes higher up to 30% because of the weather conditions or the use of the uh, air currents and other things from, from the flights uh, um, theory. Uh, so the current Guinness record actually for an electric helicopter flight is only 44 minutes. So we beat that record by two and a half times. Um, we develop a fully automated uh, and fully autonomous even flight. So if you know the differences, that tells you a lot. And uh, currently on the marketplace, most of the drones and multicopters, they, they run either on remote control or a semi-automatic uh, uh, model of flight. And that is not because of the regulations, that's because uh, developing a autonomous flight system uh, is not easy and is costly. And we invested in that and we achieved many things in that just because we had the vision that this is a tool which has to be uh, uh, autonomous. And uh, we, we don't want the operator to be very knowledgeable about radio controls, to have all the time invested into skills. We want the operator to come, click a mouse button using his computer, which he's very familiar about, and run it as easy as starting a movie or even, even easier than playing a video game. And this brings us that our um, uh, helicopter also has exceptional flight characteristics. It can fly 72 minutes with 7 kg and uh, up to 120 with less payload. It can withstand uh, wind gusts up to 15 meters per second, which is uh, almost double than the average uh, for other drones. It can operate uh, in temperatures from minus 30 to plus 45, whereas uh, other drones usually operate about uh, from minus 10 to up to 35 or 40 degrees um, heat. And uh, most of the professional drones on the, on the marketplace fly very little time with heavy payloads. Usually they are fitted to about one, two kilograms uh, to carry on board and and out of there they just fall short to to do any feasible missions and they they are used just for small locations like a small construction site inspection or other things or very short distance deliveries with a payload for carrying pizzas or something like that which is not really life saving in most of the cases so we made uh, on our uh, chassis, on the, on the body of, of our drone, a modular platform, which can very easily integrate a, a very big variety of payloads. So uh, we have uh, worked with uh, different manufacturers to provide uh, LIDARs um, uh, for uh, laser inspections, for linear inspections, also gimbals uh, we have here in the picture, 
uh, one of the gimbals we have uh, some some right of them. So this is uh, using a uh, spectral camera. We also have um, a gimbal uh, which is using uh, a uh, uh, optical camera uh, with a thermal camera and a laser uh, uh, range finder. So this is a useful. mapping and other things. Uh, also uh, providing uh, uh, attachment to a, a payload for uh, gas analysis and for pipelines. Um, and uh, all the more traditional um, payloads for orthophoto, 3D modeling, and all sorts of the inspections and monitoring uses using these uh, systems. As well, uh, uh, this uh, payload uh, platform uh, makes it uh, feasible to use for uh, cargo deliveries. Like we have uh, on, on the left, the green box is a medical thermal box. Uh, which will uh, upkeep a certain uh, temperature and uh, even pressure inside of the box. Uh, and we tested that for transporting uh, blood samples or even small organs for transplant, which is really critical in some areas. And uh, it can uh, carry also the box, which is uh, tied to the to the helicopter, is a box for universal carriages, uh, uh, like fragile things, or some uh, very urgent deliveries. As well, it can carry probably pizzas. No worries about that; they'll keep warm. And uh, the the other payload on on the right is the. A uh, special um, uh, transporting uh, cage for uh, crude oil samples, which we uh, designed specially for uh, our um, oil and gas industry early adopters. So all of this is easy to mount and uh, uh, doesn't require uh, any special uh, knowledge. So just any any personnel on on the ground can attach or detach or use this. Um, payloads for deliveries. So we we looked uh, on on our drone as a tool for a business which says that drone as a service can 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 bring an extra value. And we I just want to remind very briefly about the impact uh, of this drone as a service on businesses. First is the speed of execution of tasks. If you have to drive a a, a car with people walking usually uh, along a very uh, uh, long linear infrastructure like pipelines or roads or other things. This is very labor intensive. This is, takes a lot of time and this does have a lot of human error inherent in it, which cannot be avoided, which a drone very easy takes away all these issues. The second is relevant and comprehensive data about hard to reach large scale infrastructure and expanded areas, because we as humans are very difficult to get our eyes to the right spot. And that is uh, very often the case while many of the accident and incidents happens because people just cannot get to see the problem where it is. And having a drone flying around with all sorts of the attachment to it, with the proper equipment, uh, can 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 get the the eyes of the operator to the right spot to see the thing and do the preventive uh, maintenance. And this uh, very often can save the cost and save the lives eventually. And uh, <clears throat> the the other impact, which is. Um, really mostly unassessed is the speed of delivery of fragile or dangerous cargo. Uh, and it really it doesn't matter what's on the ground because the drone takes the sky and the sky is always available to fly uh, because grounds can be flooded, 
can be uh, covered in mud or, or a lot of other things which makes it really difficult to move on the ground and for drones that is not an issue and you know usually when something strikes uh, as a hazard thing it comes with many things which makes it even more difficult to help it so this is where the drones can bring uh, a really important value addition uh, it eliminates the risks of uh, piloted helicopter missions because in most of the hazard, hazardous situation is really risky and uh, often deemed as not feasible to to fly a piloted helicopter but the job can be easily done with with a small drone and this reduces the cost associated with flight training uh, insurance of personnel maintenance of the uh, large helicopters. It also prevents the possibility of in-flight incidents and accidents involving people and we value very high the human life. That's why we offer this uh, solution and tool which doesn't involve people on board. And it also eliminates labor intensive inspections because less people have to be deployed to do the same job and uh, it eliminates the risk to life and health of personnel while inspecting, for example, pipelines or uh, power lines where electricity or gases or other hazardous materials uh, or uh, situations can, can put in danger life of the personnel while the drone is remoted from that and uh, it can assess the thing. That's why um, the energy sector where the uh, pioneers and early adopters, uh, because they specifically are daily exposed to uh, really um, dangerous uh, things. So they explore their uh, areas to, to uh, dig and rig oil and gas. They inspect the power lines, the pipelines for integrity and leak detection. Uh, also, uh, a growing market is inspections of uh, wind turbines and a lot of other infrastructure. So, like you see in this picture, uh, uh, the, the operators of uh, such infrastructure are very worried about the drones flying or people being around because they have all these pipes and lines and cables in the air and as our drone is equipped and trained to avoid all the obstacles and being able to inspect all these complex uh, um, structures from a safe distance, this brings really peace of mind and knowledge-based decisions to the operators about when and how to maintain this infrastructure, as well as inspecting long distance pipelines. So for you to understand, 120 uh, minutes of flights gives more than 60 kilometers uh, uh, kind of span of inspection on a pipeline or a power line, and in some conditions even more. Uh, so this brings that the uh, operators and maintenance crew can spend less time on inspections or can do them more often, meaning they have a better picture and they have a better integrity and they have smooth operations and all of this redu reduces the cost. As well as remote areas like we have in this picture, the uh, delivery of urgent items or inspection of the rigs which are onshore or offshore um, and many other really objects which are remoted, uh, which are difficult to reach and they need actually a lot of care because they are rarely inspected. That's why they usually get inspected when something happens. And this is a reactive maintenance, not a proactive or preventive maintenance. So uh, there are loads of other areas like uh, pipelines onshore or offshore, which are very lengthy. They are remoted, they're rarely visited and uh, really taking care of them is very important. So I'll tell you now about some of the accomplished uh, projects which we have with uh, our early customers. 
So for one of the oil companies we did in ice exploration and patrol in the Arctic Ocean, this was a um, uh, flight from the vessel, uh, which our drone also is capable, which is uh, uh, quite um, uh, kind of exceptional. And um, the, the, the task was to detect the drifting uh, icebergs and to, to mark uh, those with a special equipment. So basically the drone will fly on the ice, will, will mount the equipment, which will then be tracked by the company, making sure that this ice doesn't drift into the rigs or other equipment which is in the sea. So this was a challenging um, uh, task because of the uh, takeoff and landing from a moving vessel on the sea with all the waves and wind and uh, uh, other challenging features. Uh, it was a area which is remote in the Arctic Ocean with a very poor satellite connection. And uh, because this vessel was uh, actively working, it has magnetic interference in the takeoff and landing and the drone coped very well with that. Uh, the other uh, project was a, uh, a project for uh, Gazprom, uh, which is the probably biggest oil and gas uh, company in Russia. So we had to deliver the five oil samples uh, from a drilling site to the laboratory. And uh, I, I want you to see the video how that uh, went. So um, you see it's winter, it was uh, uh, really freezy, but uh, the drone coped. It's a very remote area, so uh, going on a, on a vehicle on the ground was taking uh, about five times more, uh, more, more time to reach there. And uh, they do that routinely, so they do it twice a day, and that takes them a lot of resources to make sure that the oil they, they rig is of a proper quality. So they have to, to take all these samples and bring them to the laboratory to do the test and ensure the, the pipe, the, the right oil. And um, the, the next job we had was very similar to that from a different um, uh, oil company. Uh, it was again in the winter uh, in the, uh, Tatarstan. Uh, so let, let's see how how that uh, that went.
So here's a uh, presentation of uh, a rendering of a power line inspection. And this basically is not only about power lines, it can be railways or uh, roads or uh, even uh, uh, airports, uh, landing uh, tracks. Um, and uh, this is not limited only to laser and uh, uh, ortho uh, uh, photography. Um, it, it can have very, very different uh, applications. And we, we had even an inquiry to run a microphone next to some uh, industrial equipment. And the operators from the sound of the microphone next to the equipment can assess whether the equipment is uh, running well or it has some upcoming issues. So, uh, the payload is what defines the, uh, the data uh, of the operator capturing. And uh, we just provide a tool to carry uh, whatever senses you need, your eyes, your ears, your hands sometimes, uh, where people are very difficult to reach. And uh, this is basically the, the philosophy of any tool we as humans have invented. We wanted to help where uh, our body is limited to do the job. So uh, as, as universal as, uh, as a tool can be, uh, this is uh, how you can find an application for, for, for our drone. So this uh, is uh, one of the use cases we're most proud of because this was a, a delivery of uh, blood samples uh, in one of the uh, uh, remote uh, regions in Siberia, where from a uh, regional uh, small town uh, to, to a small village, uh, which uh, uh, needed uh, uh, blood for um, and uh, medical supplies for some of the uh, medical operations there. And Mm, we delivered uh, the, the cargo uh, a couple of hours before any ground transport could have reached that area, thus relieving the patient's pain. So we are very proud that this, as any other vehicle, can be used uh, to do money and to help people to save lives. So uh, we, we really encourage you to reach out uh, you can see the contact details. Uh, you have my LinkedIn and my email. As well, uh, you can check out our website at hilly.iro uh, or follow us on Instagram and YouTube for more news and achievements. And um, we, we are very happy to, to talk and partner. And if you have any questions right now, anything is burning your mind and your heart, uh, please go ahead and, and ask, and I'll do my best to answer. Thank you so much, Arthur, because of your very interesting presentation. And this is a very interesting product. Uh, well, my first question for you is, um, do you experience any trouble for export license uh, of your drones to Latin America? We are located here in Latin America with uh, a lot of potential for these kind of products, for these kind of drones. Uh, or are there any of these uh, heli solutions in Latin America running right now? Uh, we, we currently are looking to expand our network of partners. So uh, we, we don't have any partners active in Latin America. We have partners in Europe and uh, in, uh, um, in the former Soviet Union, in the countries of CIS. So we, we have uh, companies adopting it. And uh, there is no real problem about any uh, licensing or exporting because it's just an equipment, is a very common commodity. Uh, uh, for this reason, I have to mention that we are delivering our products only for civil applications. 
So we have no military or paramilitary applications, and we are strictly um, devoted to that civil application of our product. That's why there is no limitations virtually to any country to, to be exported. So we have no military ties. This means we are fully commercial or governmental um, for a charity and other use. So um, uh, being fully civil means uh, we have now running the tests for type certification, which means we can even deploy manufacturing all over the globe in any place. Uh, as we'll have the type certifications for, for the equipment. And the software is uh, uh, updated always, and it will have a feature of over the air updates. And uh, uh, we are very um, open and transparent about the data logging on the equipment. So uh, we, we always keep in mind that our customers have the right for their privacy and their uh, a kind of right on the data where they fly in the drones and how they use it. So we, we keep all these guidelines of the proper uh, open and uh, uh, the, the principles of integrity in business, I would say. So uh, if any company in Latin America wants to adopt this early one, they're very much welcome and they'll have a definitely uh, a huge advantage uh, for, for other competitors in their grounds. Thank you, thank you so much, Arthur, for your uh, for asking the, my question. Is any other question from the public right now? Uh, let me check the chat. Well, we don't have any other question right now. But if uh, anyone wants to reach Arthur, you can uh, see right now on the screen his email as well his uh, social networks. Uh, so thank you again, to Arthur. Uh, yes, good luck thank with, you. With, thank your, you. with your product. Seven kilograms of payload. It's a huge amount mm. of payload. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I think I haven't said that the maximum takeoff weight is only 25, under 25, which means in most regulatory items, it doesn't need licensing uh, for uh, large vehicles. So it can be operated as a hobby drone or hobby radio controlled. So uh, I, this is one of the features uh, is really important. So seven kilograms with under 25 uh, maximum takeoff uh, mass. So this is really impressive for many people we tell that. And with this range of operations of more than 60 kilometers, uh, makes it really, really, and our active um, ceiling is about uh, 10,000 meters. So it requires, it requires, a, uh, after certain altitude, requires other blades on the propeller. So up to 5,000 meters, we fly on the normal propeller. But I know in South America, many countries are located in mountainous areas. So we have a propeller designed for high altitude operations which are uh, delivering the same efficiency. So we thought about all Hello. the globe when we designed it. Do you know, George, yeah, talking about well, 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 well. regulatory issues, uh, in Mexico, Mexican Air Authority is uh, requiring right now well, well, uh, the installation of a parachute system for safety purposes. You know, uh, even our normativity uh, uh, is asking for an aeronautical study for safety and risks for, for the drones. And uh, I'd like to ask you if uh, your uh, uh, heli solutions uh, have some kind of parachute protection uh, on board or we can install one uh, of uh, any other manufacturer. Yeah. Uh, Adrian, a very good question. Uh, uh, obviously, I can tell you another two and a half hours about our drone. It has many more other features, and I tell you about payloads and other things. 
So yes, we, we know this thing and also uh, countries in Europe and in North America require as well a salvage uh, uh, safety solution. Uh, this is, I believe, how they call it. So we have a ballistic uh, parachute uh, installed mm -hmm. in the tail boom. So uh, in a situation of a full critical uh, emergency, for example, it might be a bird strike which is a mm. critical failure. And in case of that, uh, uh, the, the equipment will, will stop the rotors uh, okay. and uh, the, the parachute will be deployed. So the equipment is not broken and it lands on a um, acceptable speed so that it doesn't kill people uh, when, while coming to the ground. So it won't come as a bulk of equipment uh, capturing inertia and uh, velocity, so it'll it'll come softly on the ground. Good, good. That's a good That's quality very uh, product for actually. reaching, yeah. reaching, reaching certificate airworthiness in our countries. Yes, America, yes. So right? we 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 are basically coming not as a hobbyist. We we have people who have more than thirty years of helicopter piloting experience. And we have designers who are very long in the in the helicopter development. So we basically design it as a manned helicopter. So with all the highest of the industry safety and regulatory standards, but we make it as simple as starting and stopping a movie. So you click a button, you run the show, and you don't need very long, difficult uh, 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 training. So we actually have the air warfare certificate for all of the flying uh, um, uh, drones we, we have now. And we are now um, reaching out to take the uh, type certificate, which will uh, give us the possibility to deploy manufacturing in other areas of the globe, which will help with the uh, logistics uh, to deliver to our customers because we use electric batteries and electric batteries uh, require special uh, logistics so that's why we we wanted to deploy it in the local markets to the manufacturing and uh, we we think about all the systems which are most commonplace makes most sense and brings the best uh, value to to our customers Thank you so much. We'll be in contact with you for pricing and many other commercial details. Thank you yes. so much. Thank Andrew. you very much. Thank you for your attention. All of your gentlemen listening there and the partners from Saudi Arabia and other uh, stakeholders in the region. Uh, we are very hopeful that you can reach out to your management to, to take the decision about deploying this for governmental um, institutions and for the uh, companies who do the consulting in the area and globally, I mean, I know there are people from all over the world uh, listening to this and uh, we, we are very open to any cooperation and I wish you all the best luck and to all the drone operators, happy landings and a clear sky for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you. so much for your wishes. Well, <clears throat> now Ashwin and Arun, uh, we are to the at the end of the of the uh, expo. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you everybody for listening to our speakers today. Uh, Arun, do you have any uh, final words for for the uh, people? Well, for Adrian, the I, uh, we do have uh, another speaker for the day. Uh, I oh, I see. On that. I'm sorry about that. Uh, uh, Ashwin, ah. I did you share the, the details? Yes, uh, I have okay. already shared it to Adrian. Adrian is going to introduce Hanuman Trump. Yeah. Hanuman yeah, please. Uh, so, uh, will you yes, introduce, sir. please introduce uh, the, the speaker, Ashwin? I don't have uh, the list now. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, our last speaker is going to be Hanumant Rao, uh, who's a transmission uh, line engineer, uh, who's also written a book on transmission line. He's got immense knowledge in transmission power line mapping. And uh, uh, we are closely working with him 
uh, by supporting the drone data, uh, doing the flying and processing using SRM software. And now the final product is the presentation. What Hanuman Rao creates is a lot of beautiful profiling work, uh, which is he's an expert in PLS CAD, and he, he's got immense knowledge in the sector of the power line. So he should be starting off his presentation. Thank you so much, sir, for being on board. You can please go ahead. I can't, we can't hear you, sir. Me. Ah, yes, yes, we can hear you now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, well, actually, I am. Also. Yeah, please go ahead. Sir. Uh, unlike uh, many of the stalwarts who are giving presentation about the drones and all that, I am a end user. So, <laughs> what exactly the what exactly I do with the data which I get from the drone? What I do is one thing. I'll show you. Firstly, is about a presentation I made on the basis of the data, which a, a folk like uh, Ashwin has done. Yes. This is for the inspection of the transmission, existing transmission lines. And the job or objective of mine was, I was asked by railways to monitor what exactly are the lacunae in the existing old transmission lines. This is what we have done. Uh, well, I'll tell you here, with the help of a drone, we could identify what exactly are the missing, like a small uh, jumper bolt for a power line, because but that's what exactly was the objective of the customer was. Similarly, we had another issue uh, for the same tower. We had uh, we have been asked to identify what is wrong there. This uh, unfortunately we had a very lousy thermovision camera, which has captured this, which I totally disagreed with. Uh, in fact, I've been looking for somebody who is going to come out with this sort of a gamble, which is going to be ca highly capable of capturing the correct temperature of the uh, conductor or the tower, uh, because the hot spots are indicative that it is actually going to go into maintenance very soon. Similarly, here you can see uh, many other things are uh, showing this temperature is being shown as 30, 35.3. Uh, this is exactly rubbish for simple reason no charge line will be having temperature less than 60 degrees with the ambient temperature of 30 degrees. So this was a defective thermovision camera. I think somebody is going to come out with a better solution for a um, for capturing the thermovision image of the line. Another one was shielding angle was very interesting, very important in a transmission lines for protecting the line from getting the uh, damage due to the thunders during the thunderstorm, especially in the monsoon side. So only drone could capture and in, uh, capture the data that the acquire is snapping. This was very important information which we have given them and they have uh, rectified subsequently. This is another one. Uh, well, there was uh, vegetation, huge vegetation. We were not having the adequate amount of clearance between the uh, wires charge wires and the uh, trees, this has resulted in the custom and railways taking up and immediately uh, rectifying it. This is how we have done the auditing of the line. A uh, lot of people do audit all right, but what I have done was I have done the uh, I mean monitoring and have given a lot of information about how to go about it. Now I'll come back to what we do with the information we got from the flying the drone. This project in question was a line uh, that has got uh, that has that has been constructed uh, around 40 years back, and we wanted to know about what exactly is the condition of the tower. For that, the Ashwan was the person who has uh, uh, flown the drone, and he captured the information. He processed. He has given me uh, distant terrain modeling. He has given me even the height even the height of the wires, so which I have captured and I have processed in PLS CAD and uh, eventually that was uh, all ECW file he has generated through his software. Uh, I think uh, Arthosky is a software. Sky software. He, uh, yes. he has used that and uh, this has helped us in uh, obtaining one thing. Uh, 
Please bear with me a bit. Yeah, please, sir. We, this is actually the, you can see, this is all the Arthosky image I have got. And he has given me DTM, which has given me the required data input where I could specify to the customer where there's a shortage of clearances. Uh, this is uh, resulted in they having introduced some more polls to obtain the required clearance and all that. Now you can show the PDF. You can show the PDF, sir, which uh, the profiling you have created. Okay, I think that I will do. So these are all the ortho images he, I, he has generated and gave me along with DTM, with which I could map using the software PLS CAD. And uh, we could even suggest to the customer what exactly are the uh, challenges involved, because you can see there are a lot of dwelling units nearby for uh, reconducting the transmission line. So you can see the, how the dwelling units have come. This is in near uh, Kalyan, approximately around 45 kilometers from Mumbai which is a very, very critical area. It is a sort of an industrial hub of India. So these were the, this line was constructed approximately 40 years or 50 years back. And we were asked to analyze and give a solution about what exactly are the challenges for reconducting. So we have used all the ortho images from the drone, which the data was furnished by our Ashwin. And uh, we have even identified and given the customer a comprehensive solution about how to ensure that the adequate amount of clearance are obtained. You can see this all. I have plotted in the in software PLS CAD and uh, generated required profiles. And uh, what exactly this is actually the clearance between an existing line. Even this point, he could uh, capture. Ashwin could capture the height of the crossing lines. This was the beauty of the using the drains. And the, as you can see, the dwelling units are so congested there that it is, uh, it is not possible even for doing the, any survey with any conventional uh, methods like uh, GPS or uh, DGPS and all that or any, I will show you sir, one more thing. It, it is so dense that you cannot even uh, some towers are there is no surrounded by dwelling units. Yes, that was the fate there. Only drone was the way. It is so dense. They have built the dwelling units all around the towers. You can see the tower is here. The buildings come up below the line, and we could not even approach some places. So drone was the one of the solutions. Here you can see very dense, entire dwelling units are all temporary. You can say the tin sheds with uh, tin metal uh, sheds they have constructed. So this is the challenge which we have had. The solution for uh, auditing transmission line is one thing. Second, the auditing in sense, whether there is a existing transmission line, whether you've got adequate amount of clearances, whether it is safe to do any reconducting work, or there is any requirement of having to um, redo, reroute the line. And even for feasibility, we can use the drone uh, data uh, for the planning. So this is what exactly the whole idea of uh, my presentation. Thank you very much. If anybody wants to ask me a question, I'll be very happy to answer. Basically, I'm an uh, end user, more or less. Yeah, please. Congratulations. This is a... a, a great job that you're doing employing drones for generating this kind of information. Thank you so much for the presentation.
for our speaker uh, right now. No? Yes, we are done. He's the last presentation. Okay. Well, uh, if, if you have any question about uh, the products or the information generated, uh, you can uh, please write, write down your question uh, in the chat, or you can reach uh, as well um, Arun uh, uh, by Reality Vision, where you can find any contact with, you with can the ask engineer. You, you, can, you can contact Ashwin. Ashwin and me work together as far as the okay. uh, startup kind of profiling is concerned. So Ashwin is the right contact person. You can get in touch with him. I'll always be available for him. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you yeah. so much for your information. Congratulations yeah. again for this great job you're doing there. Thank well, you. Uh, Arun, now we're, uh, well, I think we are done right now yes. with the, the second day of this great meeting. Uh, uh, you know, you you are doing a great job organizing this expo uh, where we enjoy a lot of data, a lot of experiences, getting in touch with so interesting people around the globe. From Mexico, let me tell you, you are doing a great job. Thank you so much for, for your interest on promoting drone solutions, drone experience around the globe. Thank you. It's, it's, a, it's always been a pleasure, Abel. Uh, well, the, the passion is what keeps us, you know, uh, taking much closer to our uh, motive or what we want to achieve uh, in the future. So that's the reason uh, why myself and uh, my, my, my business partner and good friend Ashwin uh, came up with this concept of, you know, bringing uh, all of the technology heads under one digital roof to ensure that you know the entire globe gets to know about various technologies that different countries uh, and, and different companies have to offer when it comes to you know drones. No. So no. as a closing remark, uh, I would like to yeah, yeah. thank all of the wonderful people who spoke at Drone Tech Expo during the last two days. Uh, I truly appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule uh, to be present here to add value to this initiative of ours. Thank you, it really means a lot to us. Uh, you know, thank you for adding value once again to this, to this great uh, technology showcase. Secondly, I would like to uh, thank my team at Reality Vision Consulting for all of their efforts in putting pieces together and making this a successful uh, show. Uh, each event that we, uh, we, we come up with, we, we get introduced to uh, numerous individuals and companies with immense talent and uh, cutting edge technology. Uh, that's the best part of being in this industry, I believe. Uh, our, our network only grows uh, and, and gets better uh, with, with, with every uh, event that we come up with, right? because we get introduced to so many different uh, companies yeah. and so many different profession, uh -huh. professionals, basically. Uh, and uh, every time we get to hear them speak, uh, we're just lost, uh, you know, wondering how they even come up with such amazing state-of-the-art technology, all right? Um, the sessions on both days were truly yes. informative. Uh, Even the this valves, event is an we had ideal something, has Arun, sorry to interrupt Arun. No, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, as uh, we showed even the wearer solution, uh, that was something very different unlike the last event. So, and Heli uh, and the other products, what we showcased, this is also something amazing, which was uh, a lot of people were unaware. So even warehouse, we have drones today and we have the best solutions. Even if you have to do a long range survey using an helicopter, we do not require, we have unmanned aerial vehicle, which can do has author showed his lovely presentation too. So there are a lot of uh, advantages in survey industry, surveillance industry and the SRM platform, which has created a lot of innovative stuff uh, which has got us to this platform, me and Arun have designed it, it so well, where it is a very clear knowledge based learning, uh, you know, and has well a market awareness and a brand awareness for other products uh, into this uh, our platform. So yes, Arun, please go ahead. Well, I was uh, just to add uh, a few things like the sessions on uh, on, the, on on both days that is yesterday and today were, were truly informative. 
Uh, well, this event is an ideal proof of how drone technology can be uh, utilized for various industry requirements. You know, how drones can make our work more efficient and simple and cut costs and minimize human errors, basically. Uh, yeah. You know, so, so volumes of amazing knowledge were shared to educate everyone who were present with us. This is not, it doesn't end there. We're going uh, we're gonna to definitely uh, share the video uh, that, that we have recorded to in all possible ways on all social media and we do have a, a great list of uh, uh, data that we have uh, with, with all potential clients who are looking for such technology maybe they might not have been able to come up uh, and, and, and be present for the show because you know it's it's ramadan it's ramzan for them so uh, during this holy uh, uh, month they they will always be busy with a lot of fasting and a lot of other cultural activities so i, I got a lot of responses from uh, a lot of uh, attendees from Saudi Arabia, you know, uh, asking for uh, apologies for not being a part of the show just because of this holy month of Ramadan. But uh, uh, what I have promised them is, uh, it's, it's not that they have missed the show. I'm definitely going to share all the videos with them to make sure that whatever happened here for the last two days, that is today and yesterday, uh, they're not going to miss that out, all right? I'm sure it has to reach uh, to more people and uh, I, I, the, the, the intention of this is to make sure that more and more inquiries, uh, more and more uh, questions keep coming up. People come inquire about the products that's been showcased and uh, businesses bloom and we get more uh, partners and uh, investors basically. That's, that's the whole agenda of uh, uh, coming up with this space, uh, with this technology show. Um, well, last but not the least, I must thank APN he did a tremendous job moderating the entire event. Uh, he's of great value for us and for the drone industry as well. Thanks, Adrian, once again for exhibiting your passion and interest uh, in Drone Tech uh, Expo. Um, I'm, I'm sure that I'm going to keep you informed about uh, our upcoming okay. events. All right. We, we, as I said yesterday, uh, we do have plans uh, to come up with uh, such technology events at least once every two months. We'll be, we'll, be, we'll be featuring other parts of the globe. Uh, maybe like we're going to focus on Europe. We're going to focus on the US. Uh, we, we, want to, um, we, want to, we want to go on a larger scale, basically. So this is just a beginning for us. And I'm sure that every event that we conduct, we only get better. We only, our network only grows. And uh, I'm sure uh, very soon, it's, it's going to be a very, uh, a very strong team. All right, that, that's, that's my... Uh, that, that's my uh, confidence on, on what we're doing. Um, so we are open for feedbacks, all right? Any kind of feedbacks that our attendees or our speakers uh, or exhibitors would want to share with us, any ideas from your end on how we can uh, make this event a, a better experience uh, for you, uh, for all the attendees, for, for, for all the participants, basically. Please do uh, write to us. Uh, I have shared a email address, uh, it's info at realityvision.com. You can write either to that or you can write to Ash, Ashwin at realityvision.com or Arun at realityvision.com. They'll be more than happy to, uh, to, to accept your feedbacks and work accordingly and improve this just to make sure that we do deliver a pleasant, a, a much better experience uh, in our upcoming events. Right? That's, that's pretty much for me. Anything Ashwin that you would want to add? Yes, uh, that's it Arun. Uh... I hope, as I said, uh, we do have online courses on from SRM Solution, uh, which is for the GIS industry for survey and mapping. Right. And uh, we are also going to conduct some warehouse inventory uh, training program where drones can be applicable in, inside the warehouse, which was showcased yesterday. So these are some of the training programs which we are going to offer uh, the Saudi region and as well as the Dubai Oman region. So. If any of uh, the attendees are looking forward for their organization, uh, in-house training program also on warehouse inventory or on a survey industry or a survey and mapping industry, we'll be very glad to organize and, you know, get the training done for such organization. So as uh, yesterday, it was a very lovely session by Will who showed the complete solution of warehouse, exactly how it works and how uh, humans can be avoided, how the RFIDs can be scanned and you know put into the system. And as well as Luz showed some of the geo motion videos 
where you can integrate all the drone videos shot along with the GPS and Ypsilon maps creating the list of layers. And uh, Adrian also showed how the AI works in a forestry region for a lot of other beneficials. So I hope, you know, if any of you attendees are really interested, please do get in touch. Arun has left the mail IDs. So we'll be glad enough to support you. And uh, we always look forward to serve you people better. Thank you so much for everyone for being a part of this event. And a special thanks to Adrian to, for the lovely host who's always organizing and supporting us from Mexico. Thank you so much, Adrian. Thank all, all of you because this invitation for me, it's a pleasure to share with you these exhibits and uh, maybe Latin America is the next stop. Yes. What do you think? Definitely, maybe definitely. We can arrange we will. We can have a definitely a physical. Yeah. We can have a definitely a physical event probably four months down the lane. Probably we can showcase right. the best solutions, and uh, definitely we will be there making it a real big thing happening. Great. Thank we you so much. We expect to yeah. do it soon. Thank you so. Thank much. you so Thank much. You. All of Take you have care. a great day. Thank you so much, Arun. Thank you so much, sir. Bye. Keep safe. Yeah. Keep safe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank, you, Bye. Bye. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Keep Bye. in touch. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Get in touch. Bye.